Okay, now we're recording. Thank you. Okay. The building on the far left was torn down. There's nothing wrong with the building. Well, I shouldn't say that. I assume it was torn down. But in those days, they moved buildings all the time. So it was going to be unlikely for it to have been just moved somewhere else. But Mr. Huntington wanted to show that he had a little bit of money. So he built a building which became known as the Groat Building. I have no pictures because it was way before pictures. And I, and I don't know what it was made of. I assume it was some early form of concrete or cement block, but it was a mess from the day it was built. And I think it started falling down the day after it was built. <laughs> so Mr. Huntington got rid of that building in about three years and it went through a series of, of other owners until the city finally in 1882 said they condemned it. It was dangerous, it was an eyesore, and they said you have to get rid of it. So another businessman from Mason called Mr. Parkhurst, who had been in the dry goods and hardware for about 10 years, bought a lot on the corner and bought the lot next door. You can see where it says Parkhurst dry goods there. And he tore down the road building and built this fine wood, uh, brick two fronted building. He rented the corner building for mainly for grocery stores for a number of years until 1924 when Tony Simone moved his uh, confectionery shop in there. And he stayed there until 1983. So almost 60 years in that one location. Now, Mr. Parkhurst was in the dry goods business. Actually, his son was a, opened a drugstore on, on South Jefferson at the same time he built this building and opened his dry goods store. And the dry goods store was operated by Mr. Parkers, his grandson, his niece, and it stayed in business until 1942. A long time. And then it stayed empty until the end of the war, after which time some members of the Fiedler family opened a uh, frozen food locker. And it was a frozen food locker for 15 years. I think people were so tired after the war of not being able to have meat that they bought up all the meat they could find and stored it in this locker. Um, and then in the, uh, at, at the moment, Dr. Lindsay's office is there. It has been there since 1983, long term. Now, the next two fronts um, after the, the Parker's Dry Goods store, but those lots were owned by a couple named Angelica in Washington. Sure. I don't know very much about them. I think they made their money buying and selling real estate, but they also had a reputation for not taking very good care of the real estate they had. But they were a little put out at Mr. Parker's for building this nice brick building because he got a lot of compliments on it. So they were going to show him a thing or two. And, and they built this next building, which is very well done and very fancy. Um, they didn't have as good luck with tenants, however, as Mr. Parker's did. Their early tenants were mainly bars and restaurants um, until 1966 when Fever Insurance moved in to one of the, the two buildings and they are still there. So that's been a really, that's been a really good deal. Now I already mentioned, mentioned the barn with the right the white front on it. Uh, that was torn down in 1926. Now, now we're going to move on to the next slide. Well, I'll show you one more here. This is a much newer slide in the same area. You can see the four buildings. There's a restaurant sign in front of one of them. And then the building next to it is the third jail. Okay, now I have to read you some history. Sorry about this. I'm going to some dates and some talking. But uh, The original courthouse, well, let me, let me go back farther than that. Mason was established in the first settler here in 1837. 
1838, the first plat, plat of Mason was submitted. It was 31 blocks all east of the Sycamore Creek. In 1940, Mason became a county seat. Now, a county seat is the head of administration for the county. Well, immediately they needed a building for the county clerk and the county and the registrar because people were coming here to buy land and they needed to be able to register the deeds. So that means they had to build a office building, which they did in the middle of the block on East Maple. Um, after that, that was 1840. In 1842, of course, you know, administrators sort of multiply in the dark like coat hangers. So we had a lot more administrators all of a sudden and they needed a courthouse. So they built the first courthouse in 1842 but it wasn't where the courthouse is today. It was across the square on East Ash Street, about where, next to where the Oracle building is or right where the uh, Chamber of Commerce, Mason Chamber of Commerce is. And then in 1848, they added on a jail behind. Now, if there had, were prisoners before that time that needed to go to jail, they had to take them to Jackson because we had no jail. And that jail in 1848 was the same one where the sheriff, or Mr. Huntington, had, had lived for two years. And also in 1848, now that they had the courthouse, that they didn't build the courthouse large enough, and it was getting kind of full. So they decided they would build another county building. They tore down the first county building on East Mayball. Well, no, they didn't tear it down. They moved it down to the corner where the Presbyterian Church is and built an office building. And that seemed to satisfy most of them until 1857, when they finally came to the conclusion that the courthouse was too small. And they built a two-story brick courthouse, which this is, in the middle of the courthouse square. Now the second, just to finish off the courthouse talk, um, this is the courthouse we have today, and the reason it looks weird is because it's in the process of being built. This was taken about 1901, and you can see um, they have about the pillars quite finished or not finished. There was a lot of argumentation when they built this. They didn't, they didn't put enough money toward it, and they had to go back a couple of times for more money, and the citizens were irate. And even after it was finished, it didn't have a clock for 12 years because the city wouldn't pay for it. I think somebody finally gifted it to them. But here we are on the corner of the courthouse square. Um, East Maple is the street you see there. The grassy area is the corner of the courthouse. You can see the wooden stable building in the front there, the one that was stuccoed in the first picture. And next to it is the first jail. Uh, once they had that nice new courthouse built, that was two stories, they had some extra rooms. So they didn't need the county office buildings, which had both been built right near the uh, jail and the sheriff's office are. So they, after 15, no, I forget how many years it was, but they, they moved the old courthouse to Jefferson Street, where it still remains as a home. And that was built in 1842. That's a pretty old building. Um, so then they built the new jail and the sheriff's residence. The, the, I've got another picture here. But you can see, uh, this is before the Presbyterian Church. You can see farther down, way on the right, two homes, uh, cupolas on top. Those burned down, they aren't there any longer. But notice along the back, there the land has been cleared back to the forest, and there is still a fair amount of forest back there. Well, that's a, a much better picture of the first jail and uh, sheriff's residence. You can see better the, the jail on the back end of it, and then the sheriff's office and his home, his family actually lived there was in the front part and the other side. Now that jail lasted until 
1926, when it was way overcrowded and it was it was condemned. They said you can't have any more people in there. And it was built in 1868, and it was now 1926. It had been built before running water, before electricity, before telephones, uh, before plumbing, and it, it had all been retrofitted. So you can imagine, it was a real mess. So they tore it down and built uh, the three story is the jail, and then the little building on the side is the sheriff's house. And it's connected with a little uh, tunnel there. there in the middle. So they were actually more separate than they had been in, in the jail before that. So this one lasted until, uh, let's see, the, uh, the cells in here were, they described them as hardened steel cages. And then there were 77 prisoners in there. So they were really crowded in that other jail. And it also had an elevator, which was quite modern. The sheriff's home had a modern kitchen, a dining room, a living room with a fireplace. Um, it had several bedrooms and a bathroom. So it was, it was quite the cat's pajamas for that day and age. Well, that jail lasted until 1961, when the county ordered the Michigan State of Corrections to provide more room and accommodations for prisoners. Well, there was no more room on East Maple Street. So the county had a big patch of land out on Cedar Street, and they built the new jail there. By this time, the sheriff no longer had to live in the jail, thank goodness. So they moved it out. But then they had, um, I think it so this is these are the same two buildings, uh, a little earlier picture, but you can see them a bit more clear. Um, after they moved the prisoners out to Cedar Street, they had, they had these, these two buildings. buildings. Well, what are we gonna do with them? And half the people said, let's tear them down. And the other half said, let's renovate them for office space. Still, we need county office space here. Well, they had to renovate them because the heating plant for the courthouse was in the basement of the jail. So there wasn't really any way they could get rid of it. So they put the money into it and renovated it. Um, Three-story building became the uh, C. Ross Hilliard Ingham County office building, and that was named for the Ingham County clerk, who had been clerk since 1925. And then extension uh, and a few other offices were housed in the, the smaller house part. Then in the mid-1980s, the courthouse was refurbished. Some of you remember that. They sandblasted it and worked on it inside and outside. Well, they moved the heating plant at that point into the courthouse. So they could finally destroy these buildings and get rid of them, which they did. And in their place, they built another county office building called the Russ Hilliard Building. And I don't think we have a picture. Yes, we do have a picture of that. Uh, it's in the process of being built here. And I, ha I have to say here, this was built and finished in 1992. That's almost 30 years ago. And this is the most up-to-date picture we have of it in our files. So you need to be doing a little more work here with pictures. And on to the Presbyterian Church. This is quite a story. Um, pastor, everybody in the church wanted to build a new church, but the church had not enough money to build a new church. So the pastor, whose name was Herman, had this brilliant idea, and he got in his buggy after Sunday lunch and started, started making, making everyone in circles around Mason, stopping at the farms, and asking if the farmer might deliver loads of rocks to build a new church. And 
he was received extremely well. He was surprised, everybody was surprised. And it, it really became quite a project. The first stone that was delivered was actually given to um, uh, John Lear for Ringer Park. But he thought, well, they're building this, this beautiful church and this is a grand rock, so it should belong to the church. This rock supposedly has the imprint of a prehistoric uh, elk hoof in it. Now, I thought that was a little unbelievable. But I went over and I looked. And sure enough, there is a rock right on the Farm Street side in the corner. If you kind of back up a little and squint with one eye, you might call it an elk print. But you have to look. It's pretty interesting. The drawing stone for this church became a community project. Everybody challenged everybody else. The county four corners challenged the merchants and vice versa. And Eden was the first record setter. They brought in 37 loads of stone from Eden in one procession. I mean, imagine that the load was a, a wagon load. So that would have been 37 wagons coming all in at once. And this went on week in and week out. They would get these loads of stone together and parade them into town. The, the merchants uh, provided 108 loads. And it was, I don't know where they stored all the stone while they were building in the church. It must have been behind. Um, the ladies of the church weren't to be outdone. Uh, there were 12 ladies who called themselves the Baker's Dozen, and they organized the church ladies and the ladies of the community to put together a cookbook to sell to help finance the church. If anybody is interested in that cookbook, and the NHS has reprinted it, and we have copies available for ten dollars right here at the museum. And it is fascinating reading because all of the merchants have advertisements from 1900, and there are some household hints. I mean, actually, it's fairly interesting. The new church was built by two companies: one from Bay City and one from Ann Arbor. Um, they were a little surprised to find out that it was going to cost 30% more than they had anticipated, and it was going to take 400 more loads of rock. Because the farmers came through again and got the rocks here, and uh, in the summer of 1900, the masons showed up, and 25 masons took one summer and built the entire church. That is a lot of building and cutting. I, I do not understand how they cut those granite rocks into squares and rectangles. That's beyond me. I, I, I'm trying to even Google it. I couldn't get any good information. Um, but that was, uh, it took them just a summer to finish it. The date stone is right in the middle. Under, Under the big uh, rose window there is a red. Uh, stone that has the date, and it was the stone was donated by the, the mason company, the company who supplied the masons. But the lettering and polishing was done right here in Mason by the Elberian Smith Monument Company, which was on the corner where the dark bank is today. Uh, the, the new Presbyterian Church was then finished for a total cost of $16,000 most of which was paid off within months. They didn't waste any time at it. And if, I think everybody who's ever been to Mason is aware that this building stands there. But if you have never parked and walked to it, walked around it, just stood there and looked at it, I encourage you all to do that. This building is a work of art. It is absolutely stunning. And everybody should come and see it. And that's my commercial, and that's my talk for tonight. Thank you. Sandy, we have a few things that stood up on the chat, um, and maybe you'd like to respond to those before we get to other questions. Um, let me go ahead and pull that up just quick. Uh, first of all, uh, the comment was is that uh, is this being recorded? And 
part of it now is being recorded. Okay, the very first part of our meeting, we didn't hit the record button because we were having trouble going back and forth with two different teams. Um, but uh, we do have that recorded now. Uh, also, was to try to put the uh, screen in view and the reverb that was making your voice act. Didn't want to interrupt you, but more time. We'll come up there and try to get you in the screen, which is actually a little close to the flag. Oh, now we see you. Okay. And I did finally got rid of the reverb. Is at the very, very end. Oh, sorry. So I'm sorry about that. But uh, Rex Hauser mentioned that uh, they have a record from a local newspaper. Uh, it's an advertisement that the county was taking bids for the first courthouse in 1856. So if you want to let them know that they have that particular record from a local newspaper advertisement from 1856. And uh, also, uh, both uh, uh, Mary Garland Jackson, Rex Hauser, say thank you, Sandy. Enjoy the proof of your good work. So that's the response from them. Uh, we also had uh, uh, five other participants online. Um, and if they want to use the chat function to ask a question, make a comment, feel free to do so. How about the group here? Any questions? Great job, Sandy. Thank you. The one building. Um, was it the old deal or one of the other buildings next to it that um, when it was going to be raised, the couple bought it that moved out on Hollywood? What building was that? That was the sheriff's residence okay. on the third, the third jail. We were actually, my husband and I were, I don't know where we were going, but we came through Mason early one morning on a Saturday, I think it was a Saturday, and came to a dead halt in the middle of right in front of the courthouse because there was a building going around the corner <laughs> and they actually moved it out to Howell Road and used it as a residence. It's still there. You can still see it. Uh, Rex uh, also mentioned to you that the chair presidents almost took me to a pitch on the way out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not surprised. I would not, I wouldn't want to be moving brick buildings. The people that built the um, structure that wanted to outdo their neighbor, do you have any information on how much that may have cost? I didn't. They they were very private people, and yeah, most people most people would brag and, and tell you exactly how much it cost and and all the details, but they never did. It's beautiful. It is supposed to be an exact duplicate of the building in downtown Lansing. Now I don't believe that building is there any longer, but the the people who did the company that did the stone front had done an identical front on a building downtown. Yeah, it would be interesting to, to see it. It may be there under another front. Yeah. Any other questions? Oh my God. I wish I knew what the, the grout building had been made of. That just drives me crazy. I want to know. One of the last owners, well, no, it's about halfway through, in 1873, he tried to stabilize it. Apparently, it was tilting. And so he tried to stabilize it with jack screws and, and big beams. And so it stayed like that until they tore it down in 1883. No. You think, and it was right close by. I'm sorry, I had to run and pick my daughter up. What is this that's on the screen right now? <laughs> <laughs> I missed a lot, I think. <laughs> What is what is that this that's on the screen? 
Can you hear what Janet said? No, I can't hear. Oh. Would you repeat it? Oh, I'll, I'll try. Um, I'm sorry, I had to run and pick up my daughter and I missed a lot and I'm back now and I'm wondering what this is that's on the screen. This is the Presbyterian Church. Oh, on the okay. Corner of the East Maple and Barn Street. Okay, I don't recognize the angle of it. Okay. Anything else? Thank you very much, Sandy. Thank you. Thank you so much.